This is Block 9, the Liberal Establishment, Section 7, Vietnam, with the section Kennedy's Problems in Laos. This is old French Indochina. Today it's made up of three countries. Laos is the one in the middle. It's a landlocked country, very poor, um, and it was actually the first uh, of President Kennedy's problems in Southeast Asia. A pro-Western government had been set up in Laos, uh, and in the 1950s and 1960s, a communist-slash-nationalist movement was active uh, in that country. Um, Eisenhower had no choice but to support the, the weak and corrupt anti-communist government, and he encouraged President Kennedy uh, to do the same. In 1961, when Kennedy took office, the rebels were very powerful, um, and Kennedy was forced to the negotiating table uh, to see what he could kind of salvage out of the situation. Uh, meetings with the Soviet Union were held, and what ended up happening in Laos was three um, that the pro-Western anti-communist government was replaced by kind of a three-headed monster, if you will. Um, a pro-American king uh, would be king. Uh, he would be assisted by a communist prime minister and there would be a third leader who was kind of neither uh, a communist or an anti-communist, he was kind of in the middle. This obviously did not bring peace uh, into Laos. That obviously, you don't imagine that it would. Um, but after the 1954 Geneva Accords, when the French had been kicked out of French Indochina, and these three countries had been, uh, become independent, in 1961 the United States is starting to get re-involved here in Southeast Asia. The theory that kind of defined America's reason to be in Southeast Asia uh, was known as the domino theory. And the domino theory says that if one country falls to communism, then the other, that, then emboldened by that success, other communist movements in the area would also succeed. And emboldened by one success, communist China and the Soviet Union uh, would be able to give more resources uh, to other communist movements. So just like, you know, you press down one domino and the rest of them fall, one country falls to communism and all the other countries in the area will as well. And the idea was that if Vietnam went, that in the United States, that if Vietnam went communist, then Laos would, and Cambodia would, and then if Cambodia did, Thailand would, and if Thailand did, Burma would, and if Indi Burma did, India would, and Bangladesh, and so on and so forth. Um, and you get from this cartoon, you have a Vietnamese uh, communist soldier, a Viet Cong soldier, pushing this, and here's an American tr uh, soldier kind of trying to hold it up. Domino theory was applied you know, in the Cold War generally, but especially in Southeast Asia. It proved to be somewhat true that when Vietnam did go communist, Laos and Cambodia did as well, uh, but not the rest of them. Um, that dom domino theory was also used in the Caribbean and Latin America, uh, the idea being that if Castro, you know, that Cuba went communist, and then uh, Castro tried to you know, promote communism around Latin America. The idea was that if more countries started falling, then other countries would fall faster and faster and faster thereafter. So the United States refused, or tried to refuse, wanted to refuse to let Vietnam be the first domino that would lead to all these other nations falling to communist rule. 